Let's start with the first effect, teleportation effect. Achieve this amazing effect in just a few simple steps. Once we have the video clip on our timeline, we need to start selecting the parts we want to keep and the video segments we want to remove to create the teleportation effect. Select the first part of the video that we're going to use. Place the playhead right on the frame where we want to apply the teleportation effect. Now, select the blade tool and left click to cut the clip. Next, we need to choose the part of the video we want to remove. Continue advancing in the video until we find the frame where we want the person to appear after teleporting. All right, this works well here. We're going to remove this part of the video. Make another cut in the clip with the blade tool. And now simply delete the middle part. Perfect. Now that we've removed a segment from our video, the person will change position right on the frame where we made the cut. We just have to repeat the same process to add more teleportations. Choose the part of the video you want. Okay, I'm going to add another teleportation effect here. Cut the clip. Keep moving forward until you find the moment where you want the person to appear after teleporting. This part here looks good. Make another cut in the clip and remove the part we've decided to take out so that the person teleports from one place to another. Perfect, no more mystery. We're selecting the parts of the video we want and removing the ones we don't want in order to add the teleportation effects. Perfect. After making all the cuts, if we play our video, we'll see the person changing from one place to another in each cut we've made to the video. Now, applying the teleportation effect is super easy. It's as simple as going to the Effects tab. Expand the Toolbox tab, click on Video Transitions, and within Fusion Transitions, Look for the camera shake effect. Select the effect and apply it to each cut we've made in our video. Just drag the effect right onto the clip cuts. Perfect, we're done. I recommend varying the duration of the effects so that they're not all exactly the same. And you'll have the teleportation effect ready to use in your video. Kaleidoscope effect. Achieve this mesmerizing effect for your videos. Once we have our clip on the timeline, we should go to the Effects menu. Next, expand the Open FX tab and select Filters. Then, look for the Mirrors effect. Click on the effect and drag it onto our clip on the timeline. Great! Now, to achieve the kaleidoscope effect, click on our video clip and go to the Effects tab. If you don't see this effects menu, you need to click on the Inspector tab to make it appear. Now, simply in the Mirror Placement option, select the Kaleidoscope style. As we can see, our video now appears with the Kaleidoscope effect. To customize it to our liking, in the Controls section, we can increase or decrease the center size, modify the position, angle, number of sides. Let's play the video to see how it looks. Great! If you want to further enhance the effect and add motion, just like in my example, I'll show you how you can do it. Once we have the kaleidoscope effect on our clip, to apply a motion effect, we need to position ourselves at the first frame of the video, right here. Next, go back to the effects menu and create a keyframe for the angle adjustment by clicking on this small diamond here. Perfect! Now position yourself right at the last frame of the video and increase the angle value depending on how many rotations you want it to make. The higher the angle value, the more rotations it will perform. I'm going to increase it to 228. Now if we play our video, we'll see how our kaleidoscope starts to move and rotate, creating this fascinating effect. Let's move on to the next effect. Warp Drop Effect. Easily add this shockwave to your videos. To start creating this effect, we need to analyze our video and find the moment when the shockwave will look good. In my video, we could add the effect right when the person raises their left arm. We position the playhead slightly before the moment when the person lifts their left arm, approximately around this point here. Select the blade tool and cut the clip right at the frame we've chosen to apply the effect. Now, to apply the effect, we head to the effects menu and expand the toolbox section. Click on Video Transitions. Next, scroll down to find the Fusion Transitions section. 
In Fusion Transitions, we need to look for the effect Drop Warp. Select the effect and drag it right onto the cut we made in our clip. To adjust the duration of the transition, simply click on one of the sides and move the mouse left or right to increase or decrease its duration. Let's see how it turned out. Make sure to adjust the duration or position of the transition to make it look as good as possible. Next effect, discover how to create the ghost effect in less than a minute, quick and easy. To get started, head to the Effects tab in the upper left corner. Open the Open FX section and select Filters. There are two different types of effects to achieve the ghost effect. First, we have the Smear effect, which creates a more subtle effect. On the other hand, there's the Motion Trails effect. I recommend using the latter, but you can try both to see which one you prefer. Select the Motion Trails effect and apply it to your video clip. Great. We now have the ghost effect in our video, but we can see that the effect is too exaggerated. I recommend reducing the intensity a bit to make it look much better. To do this, go to the Motion Trail Effect menu. Here, we'll focus on the Trail Length option. Simply put, we currently have a value of 5 for length, which equates to having 5 ghost copies. If I increase this value, you'll see how the motion trail effect generates more copies. I recommend reducing this value to make the ghost effect look better. You can also adjust the drop-off option to increase or decrease the intensity of the ghost effect. Now you'll have the ghost effect without it obscuring the person in the video too much. Much better. Zoom in and zoom out effect to the beat of the song. To apply this zoom effect, the first thing we need to do is listen to our song and identify the beat or rhythm of the song. In simple terms, we need to find the moment when the song goes poom or boom. Let's listen to the song and I'll point out those moments with an arrow so you can see them clearly. I'm just gonna trust right what you say. You never play. Can't do the valley, we walk through the fire, your grace is amazing. Great. You can also clearly identify the beat of the song by simply looking at the audio waveforms. For example, in this part here, we can see how the audio rises significantly. That's the moment when it goes <laughs> What we need to do is select the blade tool and start cutting the video clip, following the beat of the music. Here we see another spike in the audio waves. We're locating the moments when the song has a strong beat and cutting with the razor tool, then applying the zoom effect to those cuts. You don't need to cut on every boom, just make cuts at the moments you want to apply the zoom effect, where you think it will work best for your video. Perfect. Deactivate the blade tool and head over to our beloved effects menu. Expand the toolbox selection and click on Video Transitions. We need to look for the effect Zoom In and Zoom Out this one here. Select the transition and apply it to each cut we made in our video clip. Now we have the three transitions we wanted, and we need to adjust the duration of each transition correctly. To do this, simply click on one of the ends of the transition, hold the mouse button, and adjust the duration to your liking. In my case, I prefer the zoom effect to be faster and shorter. Now if we play the video, you'll see that we have a zoom in and zoom out at each cut but you may have noticed that the zoom doesn't look quite right, unlike the example I showed you earlier. This is due to two reasons. We haven't selected the area of the video where we want the zoom in and zoom out to occur, and we haven't applied the motion blur effect to our zooms. Now, I'll show you how to do both things. It's very simple. First, select the zoom transition, then go to the inspector panel and click on the transition menu. Here you'll find the settings for the zoom in and zoom out effect we applied. Now, simply adjust the zoom position correctly by modifying the X and Y axis so that the zoom focuses on the person. In the case of the third transition, we can correct the zoom and focus it on the person's face. Click on the transition and adjust the X and Y axis. Finally, I recommend checking the motion blur box in all transitions to achieve the motion blur effect. Your effect will look much more professional. Get this glitch effect in just a few seconds. To apply the glitch effect to our video, we first need to go to the effects panel and expand the toolbox tab. Then select the effects option. In the effects section, 
we need to look for the effect digital glitch. Here it is. Once we've found the effect, applying it is very simple. We're going to use the blade tool to split our video clip and apply the glitch effect only to the parts we want. Let's start the video without the glitch effect. Then, we make two cuts in our clip to define the part where we want to apply the glitch effect. We'll apply the glitch effect to this small part we just created. This way, we can decide which parts of the video have the glitch effect and which do not. Great! Now we simply continue cutting and creating the parts where we want to put the glitch effect. In my case, I'm going to apply the glitch effect only to these three parts of the video. Now select the digital glitch effect and apply it only to the parts of the video where you want the glitch effect to appear. All right, I'm going to apply it to this last part. Perfect. Once you've done this, you'll have your video with the glitch effect appearing and disappearing. I recommend adjusting the glitch effect settings to your preferences. You can modify the position and size of the glitch in the digital glitch effects menu. Let's move on to the next effect, analog damage effect. Give your video a unique touch. Let's return to our beloved effects menu. Select the Open FX section and look for the analog damage or film damage effect. Perfect, here they are. When it comes to the analog damage and film damage effects, both are good options to give your video an old fashioned look. If you want to apply the typical vertical lines or other imperfections from old movies, I recommend using the film damage effect. On the other hand, if you want to achieve the VHS or vintage film effect, I advise using the analog damage effect. In this example, we will use the analog damage effect. To apply the effect, click on the effect and drag it onto your clip. As you can see, the effect has already been applied to our video, but not so fast. This effect includes a wide range of adjustments to fully customize it. It's not just a filter applied over our video. Within the Analog Damage Effects menu, you can choose from different pre-configured settings like Sharp VHS, Television, the 60s, the 70s. But as I mentioned before, this effect offers a multitude of options. We have various sections, and within each section, we can adjust every detail of the effect individually. It's perfect for experimenting and achieving a unique style in your videos. Furthermore, you can combine it with the film damage effect to achieve a different look. The film damage effect, like analog damage, is entirely customizable. And there you have it, your video clip with a much more vintage appearance. Clone Effect or Bunshin no Jutsu We need to go to the color module in DaVinci Resolve and open the magic mask panel by clicking on this icon here. All right, the next step is to find a frame in your video where the entire person is visible or most of them. Let's see, around this part we can see the whole person. The feet aren't visible in this frame, but DaVinci Resolve will likely consider them when creating the magic mask. Once we've chosen the frame, we have to click on the toggle mask overlay icon, this one here. With it activated, the mask we're going to create will be highlighted in red. Now, simply left-click on the person and hold it down while drawing this blue line over the person. Finished. It's recommended to change the quality mode from faster to better. Next, we need to track the magic mask. To track the mask throughout the entire video, we need to click on the track forward and backward icon. Click it and DaVinci Resolve will start tracking. Perfect. We've now created the magic mask you can deactivate the toggle mask overlay icon. Next, we'll remove the background from the video to isolate only the person and create the clones. Removing the background is straightforward. Right-click on the nodes panel and select the option to add an alpha output. This will create this blue circle in a corner and this circle is the alpha output. Now we just need to connect this blue square from the node where we created the magic mask with the alpha output we just created. As you can see, the background of our video has disappeared. It's time to create the clone effect. The first thing we'll do is export this same video without the background, so that it's easier to place the clone effects later. To export a video without a background, we need to go to the Deliver module in DaVinci Resolve. In Format, we should choose the format QuickTime. This is important. 
In codec, we need to select GoPro Cineform. Now, when we change the type option, change YUV 10-bit to RGB 16-bits. As you can see, a new checkbox appears with the option to export alpha output. Activate the checkbox and now export the video as you normally would. Add it to the render queue and click Render. Perfect. Once it's exported, import the video into DaVinci Resolve and drag it onto your timeline. Great. Now select the first video clip, the one we used to create the Magic Mask, and go to the Color module to deactivate or delete the Magic Mask node we created. We don't need this anymore. This way, we'll have the original video with the background. Go back to the Edit module. Now you should have the original clip with the background and the video we exported without the background. Place the video clip without the background on top of the original clip on track 2. And then duplicate this clip according to the number of clones you need. In other words, if you want 4 clones, you should copy this clip 4 times. If you want 6 clones, copy it 6 times. Simple math. I'll copy it 6 times since I need 6 clones. Then place all the copies on the upper video tracks as you can see on the screen. Alright, we're almost there. Once we've stacked all the videos on top of each other, we need to position the clones. Simply select the clone clips and adjust their position using the X and Y axis to place our clones where we want. Place them one by one and once you're done, you'll have all the clones dancing in your video. And that's it for today's. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, here's a playlist with all the tutorials. See you in the next video.